You know, one thing I love about this channel, when I produce content, it generates feedback, emails and comments from which you can produce more content and bring people's opinions and experiences to the fore. Well, when I did a video about the uh, ULES situation, somebody emailed me with their predicament about some of the cars they own. And when I read the thing, the whole setup makes no sense whatsoever. Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you very much once again for visiting me. Please make sure you hit the like button on this video, make the comments, hit the subscribe button if you're here for the first time, and just check all your settings and notifications if you've been here a while. It does help the channel grow and we're doing very, very well. I very much appreciate all your help and assistance and your great support. Well, as you know, unlike what Mr. Khan is saying, the statistics, there are a great number of cars which are non-compliant that drive in and around London. Now, particularly those that are affected are people that live outside of London who have to drive in there to work or visit relatives or whatever that happens to be. They're kind of getting left by the wayside. There seems to be no consistency whatsoever with regard to what cars are actually compliant and which ones aren't. In the Piers Morgan interview that Khan did the other day, he said that generally if you're a Euro 4 petrol or a Euro 6 diesel, you're okay. But it's not quite that simple, is it, really? And uh, there are certain cars slipping through the nets and some that are deemed compliant. You wonder why. Listen to this email that I received, and this is a fairly good example of this problem. Uh, hello, Andy. I hope you don't mind me emailing you. Never do. I have followed your channel for quite a while now, and of course I'm a subscriber, as I look forward to your daily outputs and thoughts on current topics. Anyway, today's video about you, Les. You ended with a comment about it being a huge cash grab. Well, of course it is. I think we all agree on that. It's certainly not about air quality, as you have discussed many times previously with facts to prove there is nothing wrong with London's air, apart from what's in the tube, stroke the underground. This led me to do some research on my own vehicles. I have a few vehicles, but let's just stick to three of them. That's a 1982 Ford Escort 1.6 petrol. I've not seen one of them for years. A 1992 Toyota 1.6 petrol, 2019 BMW Mark M, uh, M2 3 litre petrol. So the 3 litre petrol one is going to be a flyer. I remember my old uh, E Class I had, and that was 3 litre, and it's a diesel, not petrol, but God, that flew. I loved that car. Uh, now, going on the ULES Check website, the BMW is compliant. But being a high-performance motor, it's not as great for the environment as some other vehicles. Absolutely. Which brings me to the Toyota. The, T the Toyota is not ULES compliant. Not ULES compliant, a 1.6 petrol. However, it was fitted with a catalytic converter from new. It was around 1992 that they were becoming compulsory, and indeed, it still has its original cat fitted and is functioning perfectly, even after 31 years. Wow. So I went and grabbed the MOT emissions test results for all three vehicles for comparison. When looking at the result for the BMW and comparing it to the Toyota, the BMW is far less environmentally friendly, putting out a greater amount of CO and hydrocarbons compared to the Toyota. Yet the BMW is you less compliant. I don't understand. Now the Escort, because of its age, is classed as a heritage vehicle and therefore road tax exempt and MOT exempt and indeed is also ULES exempt. However, when looking at the emission results from last year's MOT test, which it met all requirements and passed, the emissions compared to the Toyota are nowhere near as good for air quality and the environment. Doesn't make any sense, does it? Don't make any sense at all. I read that was a workaround to get around the ULES as well. Uh, buy older cars. In fact, the Escort produces 10 times more 
uh, CO and 11 times more hydrocarbons in the Toyota. Yet I can happily trundle through Mayor Khan's ULEZ zone all day polluting the air for free. Yet can't take the least polluting car at the free through without paying £12.50. See, doesn't make any sense. To quote yourself, Andy, it beggars belief. Fortunate, fortunately, I no longer live around our once great capital city, but if I did, I'd use the Escort as a daily drive as it would save me over £3,200 a year in ULEZ fees. Why not being so great for air quality? Where's the logic? It's all about the money. It appears to me that Khan has just picked on the range of vehicles that is the largest 1990 to 2015-ish purely for revenue purposes, not for air quality, and decided to hit the poorest people driving them, by it be they petrol or diesel, onto his public transport systems for more revenue. And there's another bone of contention for the Labour Mayor. It was a Labour government that told us to go out and buy diesel vehicles and offered us all sorts of incentives in a dash for diesel. But that's another discussion. Anyway, enough from me. Keep up the great work, Andy, and safe travels. What an email. It doesn't make any sense if you make the comparison of those three vehicles. And I'd be interested to hear other people that have that story. I mean, he says dash for diesel. I, I passed my test in 97, so I've been driving 25, 26 years. And I always remember when diesel, of course, was a lot cheaper than petrol. Or, or four star as it was at the time and we were encouraged to go down the diesel route because it was great for the environment now roll forward nearly 30 years what are we being told none of it makes any sense let me know what you think in the comments perhaps we'll read through some of them in a day or two anyway i'm off i'll see you shortly with one more toodaloo